Well, hello. How are you doing today? Coulter and I are here to talk all about portfolios in Microsoft OneNote Class Notebook. We are super stoked to be here with you today. Our focus in this video is for grades three to six. Uh, if you work with other classes, never fear. This will be applicable, but the examples we use might be a little more geared to that three to six range. I am excited to introduce you to our um, team today. So I'm Bailey Olmberg. I'm from out west in Alberta, just in the middle of Alberta. It's hard to explain exactly where. And I'm joined by the lovely Coulter Lewis. Coulter, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Coulter, and Bailey and I have a nice little workshop planned for you today to get you started with one note and just get yourself familiar with it and then look at how we can build it into a portfolio tool with our students so uh, we have a full plan workshop for you to follow along with and and do things on your own sort of a play a play and pause this is going to be recorded so you will be able to go back at your own pace um, but before we begin i just want to give a, a, a nice land acknowledgement um, I'm personally coming from the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credits over here in Ontario. Uh, I'm currently settled on the lands of the Treaty 13. Um, thus, the land is an important piece of my identity. And for thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land, and I continue to do so. Uh, I'm just thankful for the Mississaugas of the Credits for allowing me as a settler to be a part of this land. And I encourage you to learn more about the land that you're on by visiting native-land.ca and find out a little a little bit more information about the, the current trees and the current lands that you're you're residing on. So big shout out to start with the Cobblestone Collective. Thank you so much for uh, supporting these workshops, getting into schools, working with teachers and being able to support different. Classrooms and different grade levels with educational technology. So thanks Cobblestone Collective as well with a big thank you to Microsoft Education and um, specifically, we also have well, we're working with OneNote tonight, right? So we do have a little thing for you uh, that we'll talk about the Microsoft Education. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can go on and uh, and claim or redeem a achievement code for tonight. So make sure you do that. We'll share this at the end again, and we might even have a moment to walk you through the the website. Uh, it's just a really nice, powerful website that provides you uh, PD that you can do alone or with a group of people uh, and just go at your own pace. So we will be provide, providing you a code to redeem to obtain PD certificates. It's great to showcase in portfolios and to track your learning. Um, and uh, I know here in Ontario, teachers are required to track their, their professional development. So this is definitely a really nice, easy way to do that. Um, so our plan today, we want to start by talking about why portfolios. We're going to create our own OneNote. We're going to add some content. We're even going to use Office Lens. I've got my phone set up. We're going to be using that and showcasing how it's a pocket uh, scanner. And then we are going to uh, talk about sharing and management. So I think it's time that we get rolling, right, Bailey? Yes, yes, yes. Let's get started, shall we? I just want to start, Coulter, by having a little brief opportunity to reflect on why we might use portfolios in our classrooms and why it might be worth our time to set up a class notebook to house um, our portfolios. So Coulter, if you could just go to the next slide. Thank you. So there's many, many, many reasons why uh, we might use portfolios, but these were the things that came to my mind as maybe the most key. So first and foremost, a portfolio, especially in the ways that we're using them now as digital portfolios, they're often First and foremost, a parent portal into the learning in our classroom. So there might be an important way to share updates around um, what's happening in your classroom. Um, I know a lot of my um, colleagues use it as a way to sort of keep parents up to date in the units of study that happen in their classroom and the exciting learning that's happening um, um, with them and their students. Um, for me personally, the most important one is the longitudinal view of the student development. So this idea of having um, evidence of our students learning over the course of a year or maybe year over year, if you're teaching in a community where you have the opportunity to build those portfolios over um, a longer um, period of time, that really feeds into a lot of things. So that's like the next couple um, bullet points on this slide, the making thinking visible and shining a spotlight on process, 
rather than product. So this longitudinal view means that we're seeing the way students thinking is involved is evolving. So when you think about what you want to include on a portfolio it might not always be a finished product. It might not always be a 100 percent on um, an article. Maybe sometimes you share um, some of the failures of a student and have an opportunity to discuss and reflect with that student um, how they're growing or what they used to know versus what they now do. So one of my favorite reflecting frames is I used to think and now I know um, to add to student portfolio so that they can also spotlight their growth um, over a longer term, um, longer term of work. That process rather than product also gives us um, a good idea of how we might want to include more than just finished work. Maybe we could include drafts, uh, uh, like really phenomenal planning. Um, maybe a student has um, shown a really lots of grit in problem solving, a, a particularly challenging question in math or science. Um, so these portfolios give us a space to share that. And the thing that I like about portfolios, especially digital portfolios, is they are a place to showcase our learning that isn't easy to send home. So I remember when I was in school, um, home, <laughs> we would be marching home on Friday afternoons with our spelling tests and um, our, you know, our math booklet for that week. But we know now that our classrooms have so much more going on in them than just uh, these spelling tests, right? So there's all those beautiful learning moments of, you know, discussing problems and sharing and, and evolving our thinking. So the, those aspects of our learning, which aren't easy to send home on a piece of paper, can be shared with parents and can be stored for students to reflect on later. And that leads me into the idea that we can emphasize aspects of our students' learning that's not captured in the mark. So some of our students might not have a shiny 100% five gold stars portfolio, but that doesn't matter really, because what matters is we understand our students have are passionate about, you know, creating visual representations of their thinking, or we understand that they're really skilled at bringing their background knowledge to science all of the time. So those aspects of student learning that maybe don't show um, success in the more traditional way, we can still celebrate with parents and students in a digital portfolio. And finally, we can also help our students, especially our older students, develop digital design and presentation skills when they're adding to their own portfolios. Um, so I would encourage you to just pause right now and think about why you might want to incorporate portfolios in your classroom. What's your number one purpose? Why are you going to put this work into make portfolios work well? Being purpose-driven in portfolios, means that you and your students can continue this work in, in a sustainable way so that it's it's not adding to your plate, but it's um, it's meaningfully evolving the student learning in your classroom. So that is a really quick <laughs> backgrounder on why we might include portfolios and the kinds of things we might um, think about as we're looking toward our purpose of portfolios. And now it is time to get to the next. Awesome, Bailey. I, I really think. <laughs> Go ahead, Coulter. I, yeah, I really think uh, portfolios are such a powerful way um, to document students in, in every subject, uh, if possible. Uh, and I, I think for me personally, what really works well is during uh, report card time and parent teacher conference time, um, where I'm able just to pull this up and just be like, look at all the really great things and the progress our students have made or your, your child has made. Uh, and I, I really think that's really a nice way that um, we can have conversations. And it just, for me again, is really nice and being built all along the way. So it's not coming down to the week before my parent teacher conference and I'm trying to get everyone's all, all the work together and, and pile it up on my desk. So it's just really nice that we have this digital portfolio opportunity. Uh, and today we're gonna show you how we can make that a reality. Um, so we're gonna start though within OneNote. So what is OneNote and where is it? How do you find it? Real basic stuff. I'm gonna go real slow here uh, and essentially uh, I'm going to actually change over to a, a live demo here, um, but you will have access to this PowerPoint. Uh, you can visit the cc page slash OneNote power uh, one more OneNote portfolio is on that home screen right there. So if you just type that in, it is case sensitive. Um, so OneNote portfolio uh, will need to be the capital letters there, but everything else should work and you will have access to this for your records to go back at your own time and you can see exactly what we're going to be doing here, but just in a really small um, 
PowerPoint that we've provided for you. So we do have OneNote and we do have a class notebook. They are two different types of programs in just a second that they do run a little bit different. One is your personal digital binder where the class notebook is a student digital binder with teacher and peer collaboration. So this is where we're actually going to build our portfolio so that you, the teacher, have access access to the students and you get to see it and then you'll be able to have some sharing rights and some management rights to control uh, exactly what you want to do with that. So within these one notes, you do have a few different spaces. Now we have this collaboration space, which is really nice because your students will be able to go on and work together or add things together. It might not be as applicable for a portfolio, but it's just important that you know that it's there. Uh, we also have a content library. It's a read only for students. Um, so they can go in and, and grab a document. We're going to showcase this to you in a second on how you can take a document and students can move it to their own library and their own sections uh, and fill it out for you, for them uh, to showcase in their portfolio. Then you have your teacher only section and then you have each student has their own personal sections and we'll walk through this nice and slowly for you. So we are going to head over to the Office 365 login. I encourage you to head on over, sign in using your education credentials. And it should bring you to the Microsoft Office homepage here. You can see that this is what my Office homepage looks like, but you can tailor it a little bit. And the top left, you have your waffles, your nine dots. So if you click on your nine dots, you can see all of your applications with your account. Yours might look a little bit different than mine um, because we have different accounts and, and different companies possibly, but I can explore all my apps. And you'll see here that here they are. And on the right hand side, we have our class notebook with that OneNote icon. Here's OneNote, which we just mentioned. That's a personal use. Class Notebook is obviously with your students. And you actually have a staff notebook down here. So it's very similar to the Class Notebook, it's similar sort of setup. Um, but it's important to know that there are three different ones that usually you're going to have access to from your Office homepage. So again, all I did was I went to officeportal.com, signed in, Got to my home page and then I opened up my all my apps to explore it by clicking on that waffle in the top left. And then from there I can see all my my tools, all my apps that I have here. I'm going to click on class notebook today. OK, so I'm going to click on a class notebook. <clears throat> and it's going to load and hopefully it's going to get us up and running very quick, but that's OK if it doesn't. Um, I, I think it's important that Right now, you just um, sort of follow along with myself as we set this up, and then we're going to pause and give you a moment to do it on your own. Coulter, I can share. I have Class Notebook open if you'd like to walk me through it. Uh, perfect. You're ready to go. So, so, Bailey, now that you have yours up, what you're going to do, you can see those options there. We can always add or remove students later, um, so we don't need to do any of that stuff right now. When you see Manage Notebooks, if you have other notebooks, that's where you can click on them and you can go to your different notebooks to manage it. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to click on the blue one that says create a class notebook. So we're going to create that class notebook. My screen must be a little laggy. I'm ready to name my class now, Coulter. <clears throat> you're ready to name it. OK, so if you're. Yeah, it might be a little laggy. So if you're ready to name it, there we go. There it is. So you're going to name it and we can do a few different things. Yeah, you've got it for your grade five for your class. That's perfect. You can name it specifically, though, if you want to just do a portfolio class notebook, you can name it um, Ms. Almberg's portfolios. Student portfolios. Uh, you can name it any of those and it, it all works. It depends on how you want to set yours up. So we're going to click on next. We have a notebook overview here and on this notebook overview. I'm going to be able to add different sort of content areas, but um, you can see that we've already talked about those. So we're going to click next. It just gives you a quick little view. We also have this in the PowerPoint too, so you can see that screenshot later. We can always add a teacher later. We don't have to add a collaborating teacher right now, but if you want to add a collaborating teacher at a certain point, you can always go back. Now you can add students here as well. So if you want to add some students, feel free. You can type last name first. That seems to pop up pretty quick. And here we go. You can add some students really easily. And it's a little tedious, but it, it, it comes, it goes pretty quick. You can get your class of 20 or 
or 25, or hopefully you're not up too high after 25. I feel for you if you are. Um, so now this is where we get to design our private spaces. So they give you four default, but we can just exit off a couple of ones. So since it's portfolio based, we might want to look at some subject based. So we can always click on that um, and we can click on add a section there. And now let's title this one. Uh, uh, what do we want to title it, Bailey? Maybe maths or language arts? Let's do language arts. Language arts first. All Ooh, the time. Put science there. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a science one next. Perth. Yeah. Fill them in. I think that doing a little math portfolio too has been quite helpful for me and for my students to see some of the progress. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's really nice to to do these sort of things in a uh, with a math context where I think sometimes we focus on more language arts pieces or science pieces with portfolio, but um, I, I really think it's a, a nice way that we can um, we can do different content areas, subject content areas. So, and you have class updates there, Bailey. Why do you have, why, can you explain to everyone why we put well, class just, updates? Because this is a portfolio. So in my grade five classroom, I'm really also curious to share, you know, class parties with parents, social emotional learning things we do with our, um, our um, wellness facilitators. There's lots of things that go on within my class that don't necessarily fit within a subject. So I'm definitely, um, thinking about, you know, well, I want to post that we had a birthday celebration for Travis. So that will go in the class updates because I don't want to muck up my English language arts <laughs> with, um, you know, other various things. I also wanted to pause here because this is a good time to stop and think about how you really want to organize it. So if you're a homeroom teacher and you teach um, all the subjects to one specific group of kids, it does make sense to have these based on subjects. Um, if you are a um, specialist teacher where you are teaching a, you know, only the social studies course to this group of kids, maybe these sections will be your competencies. So in, in Alberta, we have competencies based on um, geographical thinking, on, on our historical thinking, and as well as our critical and analytical thinking. So maybe these sections are going to be your competencies. So this page right here, number five, design private spaces is a good place to think about how you're going to organize um, the structure of each of your students notebooks. So think about these sections as the tabs within student notebooks. Does that make sense, Coulter? I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, it's and we have uh, some options and you can know those options. Yeah, totally. So I click next. Perfect. Yeah, so you click next, and this is just a, a visual so you can see this is what your notebook looks like. And I do like the fact that you can click on student notebook there. And now you can see from a student's view what they see. So you can see there underneath your student there, you've got those those sections, we call them. So those are those are really our sections. And and one way to think about this, and I know I sort of touched upon it, is that this is a digital binder. And we can think of this as like an old school three ring binder where we have sections and pages inside those those sections Remember those manila folders that you had to, those dividers and then you had inside of them you had the tabs we can see that you have the tabs at the top there yeah um, the colorful tabs at the top sort of oh you, yeah there we go yeah so those are sort of your tabs and, and we can color code those things which is really nice for our students to visually see those so this is exactly like a three ring binder that we're going to be building with uh our students to build a portfolio so Let's click create and let's jump on in there. All right, I'm going to choose open in one note to get into my class notebook. And <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so that, at the top there, yeah, there's a couple of those options, right? You can open one note, open in browser. Uh, some of you also, and I don't want to confuse you, but there is some options for um, OneNote uh, 2016 and Windows 10. Those are desktop versions, so they're all very similar um, online, and they're all uh, it, it should, it's, it's a downloaded program. So you might have a Windows 10 downloaded program, which is what I run off of, but you also might have Windows 2016. And it's, there's very similar functions. It's just the layout is a little 
a little bit different. <laughs> OK, um, so yours might look like ours exactly. Yours might look like a different version, the 2016 version. So um, perfect. So it looks like you have your collaboration space there, your content library and your teacher sections. Uh, so Bailey, at the bottom there, it says add section. So here's one thing that we're going to get started. And then we're going to give you some time to build this on your own. OK, so the bottom, it says add section there. Now, if you scroll back out, it's important that we know where we're going to add a section. So do we want to add a section underneath Dana or do we want to add a section in our content library or our teacher only library? So we want to make sure that we have some of these these options set up properly. Um, so you do need to make sure that you've clicked on that area and it's opened up or it's highlighted gray there. And now if you want to add a section, it's only going to be added to Dana section. So maybe for right now we want to add it under. Um, let's go to content library. Can we add a section under content library? Perfect. And we're going to title this one. I'd like to title it templates for right now. Let's just title it a template. OK, so now what we can do is we can add different pages to this section. So Something see, see how it's moved there? Yeah, <laughs> so this happens. This is a common thing. So don't get it's just about where you clicked it. And so we need to delete the section. I'm kind of happy this happened. So let's delete the section and then make sure that you click on content library and then there's a section there that says using using the, the content. Yeah, click on that. And now it should go underneath if you click on add section. Got so it. You do have to be it's a little tedious, but it, it should now populate there. Perfect. So now we can add some some um, real basic pages here. So this one might be a template that we want. For example, we love a good KWL chart, right? Especially when we're building that, uh, as Bailey mentioned earlier, about why we're using portfolios. We want to see that progress of learning. So now we can go in and we can insert something like from an online picture. So we can click on online. And we can search for a KWL chart. And I love that that it just says like a Bing search, a Microsoft Bing search. So it was as easy as searching images and then finding something. And there it is in my template. Perfect. So um, just to re uh, make sure everyone knows to title that page, Bailey just put the title on top of the KWL, right? So right on top of there, it's KWL. So Bailey, you can add a couple more blank pages right now, because what we're going to do is we're going to pause everybody and we're going to let everyone have a moment here to to actually go and, and add some more pages to their sections. So that's where you would add some pages just to get familiar. So I think it's time. And we have a quick and we let yeah I like the reflection form and we'll let you set up. Um, I think it's side 28. Okay. Uh, and so yeah, so we'll give you a set there to just set up and, and set up your KWL chart or insert sorry your pages and your sections. Real simple. We'll give you a moment and we'll we'll catch back up with you in just a second. Well, I wonder if they paused or if they're like, let's get to the exciting stuff, Coulter. <laughs> <laughs> this is the meat and potatoes now, right? <laughs> yeah, we, well, we got excited there, Bailey. We jumped ahead. We didn't give them time to, to add sections and pages, and we jumped ahead to the meat and potatoes. So at least we resolved down and, and brought back because there's some <laughs> really cool things that we can add to this as you saw that KWL chart right so there's there's the one um but now we can start thinking about maybe what we want to put into our students areas so um we're going to show this real quick and i do it have the slides at the very end of our slide deck but we want to maybe put that kwl chart in some of our students sections so if you clicked on kwl then at the top there Bailey, you have your tabs at the top see those tabs Let's click on class notebook. Yeah, click on class notebook there. So oh, once you click on class notebook, you can then distribute the page. Yeah. So let's click on distribute page. And let's distribute the page. Um, if you actually just click on distribute page, the first one, you can see those options that you have, though. You can do a bunch of different options. Mm -hmm. And then on the right hand side, it's going to say, where do you want this page to be dropped into? So I love a good KWL chart with science. So maybe put it into a science. Science section. Sure. Sounds and then good. you click distribute. And now 
all of your students are going to get this KWL chart in their science section. So it's really nice. Again, we just did a couple clicks and it's like a digital photocopier. Now, because the, the KWL chart is technically in your content library, students can go to your content library and copy the page over really easily. But sometimes, especially with the younger grades, grades three, grades four, maybe we haven't trained them just yet to do those sort of things. So this is a really nice, simple way for you to make sure that they all have that content in their science section right there. You can see that uh, Dariana has it and Dana has it there. So really nice way that we can distribute those sections. And that's what we might do with um, inserting a picture and then distributing that picture to everybody. Right. OK, so Bailey, what do you have next for us? So I'm just thinking about now. OK, so now comes the time where I really want my students to think about um, working in this in this portfolio. So my where our students are in grade three to six for most of us in this video. And at this age, we're now ready to get them to start thinking about um, curating some of their own work. It can, it doesn't necessarily have to be an entirely teacher directed um, process. So Cobblestone actually has a co-taught lesson for introducing students to this notebook so that they can do this as well. So we're just gonna run you through a few things that um, make adding work really simple here. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this KWL chart um, under Dana's notebook. I'm gonna call it um, March 22nd Reflections. So now I know my students are going into OneNote, they have um, their KWL chart and Dana's is specifically named March 22nd. So there's a couple of different ways that Dana can um, work on this. So there's these tabs up here, just like where we went to class notebook. We might go to the draw button. Now draw obviously is always best on a tablet, but it is possible um, if you have very patient students on a, Chrome, on a computer as well, you can choose the pen and um, students can mark up this work here. I'm just going to scribble so that these scribbles are very, um, you know, identifiable. Um, you could also have maybe as a picture of a student work here and your student is marking up and labeling um, some of their student work and saying, you know, right here is where I show my understanding of um, the ecosystems of Canada, or right here is where I understand the Cordillera, Cordillera region to be. So that's the drawing tool. There's lots of options to change things around, change the colors. You can also erase. It's quite straightforward. Now, the very cool thing is I was editing Dana's. So Bailey. Go ahead, Coulter. What I think is really cool is that this is pretty much a whiteboard option that you're showing right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really nice that it has that accessibility option for students that might want to be circling things and drawing some shapes to, to support their learning depending on their grade, right? Um, but it looks like you've just clicked on that or, uh, and I'll let you continue, but I, I really like the fact that this is like a whiteboard option. Right, so you can also choose that text button and type. So what do I know? I know that Canada is really big. In Social 5 or Science 5, we talk about Canada's regions and then that can be clicking and dragging. So it doesn't necessarily have to be typewritten. Underneath that draw button, you can choose the pen or the type. Now, I was saying this is Dana's notebook. So I want to show you in um, Darian's notebook, um, under this KWL page, the changes aren't there because that's specifically Dana's notebook. So this is no longer universal one. I'm working underneath Dana's name, underneath Dana's name in the KWL page. So Dana's changes are on Dana's notebook, which I think is really cool to personalize stuff that we've sent out to all of them. Yeah, I think that's great. And I, I really think, um, Bailey, you just added that. I know that Canada is really big in there. Um, can you just show how you did that again? Mm -hmm. So I went to the draw button. I clicked on this pick this button here. The it's got a cursor and an A and a type type face paid button. I clicked on it and then I clicked not on the picture. <laughs> I had to click underneath or around the picture and then I can type right here. And if I click on that now I can move it around. I have to click on the bar at the top. 
and then I can move it. Because this is a picture, clicking on the picture to create a text button doesn't work. Awesome. I think that's great. <clears throat> yeah, so now, let is go. there a way is there a way that if we want them to um, to to add, add a dictation, is there a way that we can dictate something? There um, is. So they can go from speech to text. Is there a speech to text under the home button? Maybe. Thanks, Coulter. There is a speech to text under the home button and it is hiding. Maybe help me out, Coulter. There it is. <laughs> dictate this microphone. Got it. Um, so this is a super cool accessibility tool in, in Microsoft OneNote. So our grade three students might not be super proficient with typing yet, and we don't want to spend that time for them to find all the keys. We can choose the dictate tool and I just have to allow my microphone. And now I am recording. I don't know where it was recording to. It should, it looks like your cursor is up at the date. So that's a common uh, thing that we see sometimes too. So maybe just move your cursor. There you go. See, now it's put down on that date there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a common thing. <laughs> so again, this is great that you see this because your students will have this happen institutions all the time, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, now now you can just click on that dictate. We can see your cursors underneath the arrow yeah. and it will start dictating what the student has to say, which is great. Yeah, so this might be like, uh, you know, my questions are, what is the farthest north region of Canada? Question <laughs> mark. What is the warmest region of Canada? Period. <laughs> So you do have to say the um, um, what are those called punctuation marks sometimes for them to show up, which I like for my younger students because it creates some thinking about the structure of language as well. So again, that dictate the text to the speech to text feature is underneath the home button and is all the way over here in under this blue microphone. And there's also different languages as well, which is great. Mm -hmm. So you, if you have multilingual students, they could of students can dictate in different languages if they need. To. Right, exactly. Yeah, so now I'd like to check right, out. What else you got for us, Bailey? What's next? I'd like to check out the insert tool because we're going to be inserting lots of pictures. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have a picture on my desktop because Coulter was supposed to be demoing this, but we could insert a picture from our file um, right here, which is just like uploading a picture um, into any other typical portfolio site. So if you're taking a picture on your tablet, on your phone, um, if you have files that the students have emailed to you, you could upload the pictures from your file. You can also upload them from your camera. Coulter has a much cooler way to show you how to do that with Lens um, that he'll demo hopefully soon. Um, you can also yeah. upload file. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead, Coulter. Sorry, Bailey. It was just going to say it's nice that if you have a camera on your computer that you have that option so students can just quickly take a picture of when using their camera from their computer. Right. Um, but sometimes some devices aren't equipped with those, so that's okay. Um, we're going to show you a second option as well. Right. Um, if your students are submitting, you know, finished pieces to their portfolios, um, I would go with the insert file button. So that's where you would have downloaded the student's work as a PDF or a, a um, Word document. So that's where you could insert the file specifically in there. You can also also insert links. Um, so if you had your videos posted of your learning that day, you could include a um, a hyperlink to your video. I'm just slowly going through here up the bars because there's all sorts of different things um, to add here. The thing that I think is most interesting for our age group for the grade three to sixes is this audio button. So we might have our students um, have a finished product and we might want them to narrate some of their work. And like I mentioned before, that typing, the writing can become really text burdensome and we're, we're not really having the focus on what we want the focus to be on. So if we just use an audio recording, we're really focusing on the reflective thinking or the forward thinking that we want our students to be accessing. So if I click this audio button, 
Um, you can see up here at the top, I'm recording a um, audio for my um, this, this page here under Dana's um, notebook and my computer won't zoom out. I'm just going to refresh this page really quickly. <laughs> I got trapped because so yeah, it, it's recording, which is which is. <laughs> yeah, it, what happens is and it always gets me as well and it's going to get your students is as soon as you click that record, it yeah. actually starts to record right away and that's where that stop button comes into play. So you should be able to see it there. Yeah, it's going to load. So it does immediately and it doesn't give you like a warning like we're about to start recording. It immediately starts recording as soon as you click on audio recording mm -hmm. and uh, and then you can stop it by going back. To the screen um, that. That we had there. So Bailey, maybe if you go to insert again. Mm -hmm. There you go audio and if you click it one more time. You can see it's now automatically recording. It's actually started. Yeah. Okay. So now you can stop it and then record again and then stop it and record. That's a super good tip. So if I'm going to have my students there do this, go. I would say click stop and then think about what you're going to say. And then I would say, you know, we're at the end of our unit now, so I want my students to include a recording of the kinds of learning that they've done. Um, I'm just going to press record again. See, it doesn't like when I click on that big picture. So I'm just going to record a what I learned section. In this unit, I learned that Canada's north is the largest geographic region, and it also has one of the greatest um, ecological diversities in Canada. And then my recording, once it buffers, because that one was a little bit long, it lives in this little button and I choose play. In this unit, I learned that Canada's north and then I can turn it up here. So there's pause. I can turn it back 15 seconds. I can turn it forward 15 seconds. So the possibilities there are super huge for our students who are still developing their literacy skills, especially their written literacy skills. Uh, we could think about our English language learners who are maybe more proficient um, in an oral language rather than they are in a written language or vice versa. There's lots of different ways to use that audio to support our students learning. I want to show one really cool thing and then I think I'll um, call this a good spot to pause so that we can experiment with all of these different ways to add. So if you as a teacher are going in to your students portfolios and you want to leave your little mark, there are these stickers here and I love stickers. You can of course add your, your regular plain Jane emojis, but what I'm really loving is these stickers. So there's lots of ones that are related to what teachers care about. So there's an empathy sticker <clears throat> where I can say, you know, in this unit, if we were focusing on some social emotional growth, um, Dana was being super empathetic with her group when she was learning with them. And you can see there, um, my little empathetic rhino is there. And maybe I want to go down to Darian's um, KWL chart. And I want to say that Car Damien was, Darian was super self-aware in this. Um, so I'm just leaving some feedback so you can see that there's ways for teachers to leave feedback too. We could leave written feedback, we could leave audio feedback, but then there's super cute stickers as well. So I'm going to go ahead and call this a good time to pause. And we are going to give you some time to um, add five, some I think. to your um, to your notebook. Thanks, Coulter. Slide thirty-five. <laughs> so now would be a good time to pause. Try out adding the images, the audio notes, dictating. Just like in um, other uh, Microsoft tools, you can add tables. So think about the kinds of things you want your students to do. Maybe take this time to start doing some masterminding and thinking about how your students will design that. All right, Coulter. <laughs> Yeah, give us a pause and, and I think it's time that uh, you just have a moment to practice what we've been talking about and set something up. 
I love those stickers, Bailey. I think those are great. And uh, yeah, it's good to also have some nice little feedback, even though it is a student portfolio and, and it might not often think about giving that feedback. I think it's great that we have an opportunity to if we want to do it on some options. Mm -hmm, for sure. So um, let's come on back. If you need more time, give us a pause, finish off some of those ideas and uh, yeah, come on back. And and what we're going to do next, I think I'm going to share my screen here. And um, what we were talking about earlier was that your device um, might have a camera, it might not, right? So we might have some options to, to do some things, but um, Oops, I'm recording by accident. That's not what I want. <laughs> what I'm going to show you right now is that how you can use your phone device to um, to actually capture students' work. OK, and you should now see my phone screen. Yeah, there it is. So I'm just using the app on my phone. There's there the Teams app, which we'll call we're on right now, right? And I've got the phone there um, all set up. Oops, there we go. And on my phone, I have uh, this app called Office Lens. So it's just a simple app. Looks like the, the red L there on the top left. Anyone can download it to a device or a tablet. And when I click on it, it's a pocket scanner. So I actually have some student work right here, right? <laughs> just showing you, it's, it's it's our it's our break right now, so I'm not at school this week. So I've created some student work, right? And the nice thing is, I can just grab a little crop here, and I just take a picture, and it actually crops it on its own. So it's got some technology in there, and it recognizes that it can it can format the crop, and then I confirm it. Here we go, and I can also take more pictures if I'd like. Um, but for now, I can I only need to use this one. Well, I actually grabbed two of them. So one's got my shadow, so I can always delete that. So I just click on those three dots and you can see I can even crop it. I can even add some text and some ink to it if I want. Right, um, maybe I can draw a little. I'm not the worst drawer, but maybe we can draw a little person running. OK, <laughs> so I do have some of these options here um, to just enhance this as again. Again, I can click on text. And I can click, write something over top of this. Uh, maybe here is my best work. OK, so I can do a few different things. That allows me to work and again, I'm just using my phone. This is just an iPhone. It's like an iPhone 7 actually. It's kind of older, so um, this is just a simple one. I can also add more pictures here again add some filters. I can rotate, uh, so I have some of those options and then. I can go on back. And I don't need this one anymore. I'm just going to delete this one. We'll keep this one with the shadow. OK. So when I'm ready, I can send this off. I click on the done option there. I click on done. And I'm going to send this off to one of my accounts. So you can see here I'm in my school board account and I can send it to a variety of different places. I can put it to my photos if I like. I can um, put it into a PowerPoint or Word document. I can even email it to myself um, and I, I, I do have immersive reader, which will if there's any text on there, I can read the text back to me, but I'm going to want to put it into a OneNote, right? So there's my OneNote. I can title this so. My actual. Name will be titled this, so maybe this one's uh, best. Uh, art work. OK, uh, and I can maybe date it. 422, sorry, 322. All right, so there we go. And now it's going to transfer. So it's actually going to go into a specific section. It usually gives me an option to show you what sections. Um, and it should have, but it didn't. So we're going to show you again. So it's so transferring. And I know because I already set this up, so I know that it's. There we go. Confirm. I just want to point out how wild so that scan is because if you've ever received a really poor quality scan from a student that's like crooked and dark and 
you know, f- 4 million miles away, this is a game changer <laughs> for looking yeah. at. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So you, you can see that was my fault. I actually put it into the default section in there. I took that picture. So what I can actually do is I can go back and I can find that specific one because I wanted to show you that it shows up with all the, the other documents there. But um, that's okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to keep going with it and we're just going to do this one. Uh, and then again, it says that title or where I want to put it. So I click on one note and this is where I can title it again, but it says that default section. So that's what I missed to, to highlight there is the default section. And I want to put it into student portfolios. And when I put it into student portfolios, I, I add it to this class. Okay, so there are my three students. All right, and maybe we're going to go into Nicholas's here. And we want to go into science. OK, or maybe I have an artwork one. So then it's transferring there and there's the other one. Here's mm-hmm. my best work. And. It actually is going to open up one note that I have on my phone, which is great. You can put this on any device. One note on your phone is awesome. Um, let's see if it's going to open up right in that room. I think because it's on. A default one, but essentially it's going to go into that portfolio, which is important that we have this option on your phone to do these sort of things. So um, it's just going to take some time and it's not that big of a deal. You see it going there, but if it does take a second and it's ready to go, then we'll do it. But it looks like it's just taking its time for me today. So I can see it here and I can see that it's gone into um, Nicholas's spot. You can see my screen. So you can see here it is. And I just sent it over. I didn't retitle this one. I don't know where the other one went because it was a default section, so I'm <laughs> not sure where it went. But um, you can now see that it's going to load here, and this is going to be that just a nice clean picture of that student work. There it is. Right. Super right. Cool. So it's great. Again, I can retitle it at the top here. My work, and then I can do all those things that Bailey was talking about earlier. We can click on top of this, and now I can start texting or typing. This is just a way I can type over my work in my portfolio. Right, so we can now do some things with this picture here that we've already just we've captured. So it's a really nice way that we can easily add things into our portfolio and start building this up. OK, uh, we we have some uh, a little couple of things on our PowerPoint to walk you through how to do this. Uh, feel free to go that at your own pace. And I sorry, think Colter, I stole from you. Did you did you just steal from me, Bailey? I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you gotta blow us out of the water here. Now you gotta now you gotta come out and show us something real good on your screen. <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> there it is. It's a little yeah. underwhelming, I guess. It's a little underwhelming, but yeah. <laughs> there's there's how you put office lens and use office lens to to take a picture, add it to your OneNote, throw it in a student section and and be done with it. It's really convenient and, and really nice. So um, Bailey, if you hit on to the yeah, met, met, moved on to the next couple of slides, we have some additional resources as we start to wrap our workshop up. This is just ways that you can get more familiar with OneNote if you're still trying to teach your students and you're still trying to figure this out a little bit on your own. These are ways that we just sort of um, have used in the past with students to help them get more familiar with using some of the tools. Uh, the next one is 10 uh, is actually join us. With your students, we have the link there for you. Head on over sign up for a co-taught lesson where we come into your, your room, you press play on us and we will teach your students how to build a portfolio. So it's hands off on your end. Uh, you're going to get some um, some certified teachers in your class working with your students. Um, and it's a really nice complimentary feature that uh, Microsoft and, and Cobblestone are offering for you. So click on that link and join us um, for a workshop. Uh, then the last one is a 10 things to do in OneNote class notebooks. Feel free to, to use this graphic and, and take a look at it um, because there's some really nice ways that you're able to, um, to do this. And then uh, to wrap things up, Bailey, um, what I would like to do is, yeah, that Microsoft Education Center. So you can head on over to the Education Center and um, actually complete some, yeah, some programs. There you go, Bailey's doing it. Uh, and you can redeem that code once you're signed in and you'll be able to, Bailey's doing it for us. 
and yeah, you'll be able to to redeem some points and and track your your, your PD, which is important, definitely. Uh, and it's a really nice way. There's also about 100 courses right now, ranging from 21st century learning design to Minecraft education to more options with OneNote. So there's tons of different self-guided training um, at this website, and and definitely feel free to to do that. And that's where you put in our code for today, which is. Is oh, it's pretty easy to remember for this one actually. T dash E F E E F five five two two. So uh, jump in and do that. And uh, Bailey, I think we have two more minutes before we fully wrap up. I have to um, make sure that students or teachers know that when they want to share this out, they can easily share. So I'm just going to share my screen one last time because I think we have a second here. Um, so inside of your portfolio here, you can always share this. So it's a really nice, easy way, but you can also click on class notebooks and you can add and remove and you can sort of manage your notebooks up here. I know we just sort of throw this to you at the end and it's um, but it's important that you know that it's here and that you can manage your notebook this way. OK, and then you can even. There it is, parent and guardian links. So for example, if you want to find a section from a student, you select your student. So there's Nicholas and I'm going to get a link for Nicholas's section. So it's really nice that you're able to grab that link and now we can send this off to his parents. OK, so it's a really simple way that we can share these with our parents to have that open communication um, and they're available. They're, they're make, we're making it more accessible for them to see their student work. So again, I clicked on class notebook. And then over here, there's that little book. I clicked on manage. There's that book, so I click on manage. And then I'm going to click on parent and guardian links. I'm going to select my student. And I'm going to get a link. So I thought that was really important that we just didn't overlook that at the very end of our workshop. And I hope that that leads you with some more feelings of, oh my gosh, this is a really nice user friendly tool that I can work with my students and and really highlight some of their um, their growth and their knowledge. So I think it's a really nice option for you. Um, Bailey, if you want to add up that line and we will get out of here. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us tonight and, and sharing your time with us. We, we definitely uh, value it and we hope that you found something practical that you can take away from today. And um, I think Bailey has one more slide. Maybe I can do it. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. OK, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. There it is. Awesome. So yeah, feel free to send us some feedback at cobblestonecollective.ca slash feedback. Uh, let us know what can we work with you next time on. Uh, do you have any ideas for workshops? We'd love to share our knowledge. We have a handful of educators from around the globe that work with us that are, are experts in different tools and tricks. And, and so we'd love to share with you some of those options. Uh, just let us know what those options are. Maybe for what can we do to help improve your classroom and and your use of te educational technology in the classroom? Uh, and it, because you've you've joined one of our workshops, we have a help at cobblestonecollective.ca. Feel free to send us anything tech related or just education related to us. We have individuals manning that line uh, all day long, and and we'll be able to get back to you um, with with a, hopefully an appropriate answer that we'll be able to support you with. Um, so again. Our website or our um, our PowerPoint for today is the CC dot page slash one note portfolio. Feel free to get your own PowerPoint for this and walk through it on your own. Again, this, this is a recorded session, so check out the recording, go at your own pace and thank you so much for being here tonight uh, and uh, join us for that co-taught lesson so we can come and take the the load off your shoulders with integrating this tool into your classroom and get your students set up and started. Take care, everybody.